Well, Baja California is one of the most amazing environments on Earth. Hello. We have this very sear desert, beautiful desert, with wonderful plants and cacti and so on, but it's juxtaposed with this incredibly rich marine environment where we have all of these marine mammals, dolphins, whales, sea lions, all benefiting from one of the most productive parts of the entire ocean anywhere on Earth. And so we're able to see more kinds of whales here, a greater variety of life in general, both on land, in the desert, and uh, in the sea. And it's just a very, very special place which few people have the opportunity to visit because it's still a wild place in most of the peninsula and certainly out here on the islands. They're completely uninhabited. They're all protected as part of a biosphere reserve, and so they will be this way forever. Here's one right there. Any boats interested? We got a tea party. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> OK, there's a whole whale down there. Look at that huge mother. Today, this is lovely first morning uh, on Isla Magdalena. The vegetation we're going to be seeing from here to there is mostly, it's all halophytic. It's plants that can take the salt because this uh, tide goes way inland, almost up to the mountains and hills on the other side. And all these little dunes, medium sized or whatever, had or have plants. This one's uh, eroding away because the plants died. Here we're going to cross over to the other side of the sandbar and go to what's called Sand Dollar Beach, where you can find a great many number, big, big number of big sand dollars, not little ones, big sand dollars, right on all the beach, plus other shells and maybe the skull of some kind of marine mammal or whatever. It's a beautiful view of Bahia Santa Maria, the Bay of St. Mary, and the open Pacific is on the other side. Oh, it's magical. I love deserts and I love Sonoran Desert especially, so this is just perfect. Yeah, I mean the, the combination of the sea and the sand and the history and the culture is just um, lovely. And now I'm looking over on the Pacific side and it's pretty wild. <laughs> and why take one when you can take six? There you go. <laughs> so she now has Giant eyeballs. Giant eyeballs. There you are with your fire awesome. pesos. <laughs> the teensy blow. Okay, good morning everybody. 
Welcome to Bahia Magdalena. We're on the northern part of the bay right now. Which means that all the whales that are coming to this area are coming in through Boca de Soledad. And this is a very special place, a place like no other in the world where the gray whales come over and give birth. And uh, today we have a very nice morning. The tides are not very extreme, which means that uh, the whales may be calm. They may not be traveling a lot. So we're about to have our first experience here with the gray whales. Here's one right there. Gray whales were subjected to very heavy uh, whaling around here in the lagoons and uh, historically whales and humans have not been very good friends but it's a very interesting thing with the, what we see here because whaling stopped maybe about a hundred years ago or something like that. Mother coming up on the left side again. Whales not black. And we don't know how long these whales live. It is possible that some of these whales lived those whaling days that were not good for them. You people have the right karma. And today we see a very dramatic change in their behavior where they're not only accepting of human beings, but sometimes there seems to be an interaction that they're looking forward to when we approach them. Coming up again, 12 o'clock, approaching to the surface. That was nice, the two of them blew at the same time. Oh! Watch your lenses. Yeah. All right. Watch your lenses. Ah, that was cool. So what uh, Alusha is telling me that this whale, the mother, sometimes, sometimes goes like this with the tail. So we need to keep a distance from her. It's not aggressive, but sometimes they get playful and it's right under the boat. Right under the boat. Look, they're right under the boat. Okay, put your hands out, put your hands out, put your hands in the water. Okay, coming up. Okay, put your hands out, put your hands out, put your hands in the water. Look, Alusha is putting the example. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> Oh, cow! Wow, so now we have whales, and they need to vote on both sides. Okay, we'll do the opposite side. Oh, oh, mama! 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 These whales have really good taste for people. This because they're all the same height. This Absolutely. Smart. They specifically chose this group. Oh, there she is. There she is. Okay, there's all whale down there. Look at that huge mother. <laughs> Pointing at us. Here it is, right under the boat. Blowing bubbles. Hola. Okay, coming up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You're really, really spoiled. This doesn't happen right away. Sometimes it takes two days to get a whale have this behavior. So not only this one is tolerant, but this is the one that we know that shows a friendly behavior. Okay, there are bo uh, bubbles underwater. Sometimes the mother will spy hop right after that. Sometimes she will not, but keep an eye out. It's the 
amazing, and I want to take them all home with me. <laughs> and they're just so soft and smooth. You expect them to be different texture. I don't know what I expected, Slightly but it's rubbery. amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Man, that was quite an experience. Oh my goodness. This is our last morning in Boca de Soledad, the mouth of solitude here with these amazing California gray whales. We've had such an amazing experience together and we have yet one more opportunity to spend time out in this coastal lagoon. We've got a windy morning, but you know, the whales don't care and there's lots of them here. They only spend about 1% of their time at the surface. Coming up, 11. Hello. Those few of us who are able to make this long journey to this little body of water in this remote place are so fortunate to spend time amongst these amazing mammals who actually seek contact with human beings is so remarkable. And to be with them with their young in the birthing lagoon is really a special privilege. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 7 o'clock. It's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Just had the sun come up here as we round the Cape region of the peninsula. We're going to go in and take a look at the rocks here at Land's End. It's another beautiful day here in Baja, California. Once again, good morning. Well, San Jose del Cabo is one of the most uh, beautiful towns in Baja California. It's very authentic, opposite to Cabo San Lucas, that it's 20 miles from here. Cabo San Lucas was developed for, as a tourist destination, so it's been always focused on cruise ships, nightclubs. You won't find a single nightclub here in San Jose del Cabo, just local ones, but what you will find are buildings that are 150 years old, farms around the town because of the amount of water. So it's a very, very traditional town. And that's one of the reasons we have the, the city hall here and the main plaza. We have cultural events every weekend that are supported by the local government, like music, dancing. There are galleries in the downtown district, so people can come, walk through the galleries, visiting the artists. Some of them are local, some of them are from other parts of the world. So it's such an interesting town. Even we are so close to all the tourist uh, activity, it hasn't affected uh, San Jose. It's a very quaint little town with a great art district. 
And the reason we are here is because of the great amount of fresh water that we have from La Laguna mountain range, like 30, 40 miles away from here. And water gets to San Jose del Cabo through the San Jose River, that it's a, basically a subterranean stream of water. But in some areas like here, you can find water in the surface. This place is so important because to a semi-desertic place like the tip of the peninsula, the amount of water makes of this uh, one of the greatest oases. It's a perfect uh, service station for birds that are migrating south using the peninsula as a highway. But also we have a great amount of uh, resident birds. Since this is fresh water, we find carp and tilapias. So the ospreys and other species of uh, birds are very, very active in this area during all year. Great favorite. See how it has all dark legs? You're going to oh, see a yeah. nice size difference between the two now. Woo! There you go. Nice comparison. Snowy egret versus great egret. Wow, what a difference. With a really generous sprinkling of white-faced ibis. incredible experience I've ever had. We're watching humpback whales um, come out of the water. I don't know what you call it. Showing their flukes and everybody's in awe. We are having an amazing time this afternoon. We're just off Gorda Banks and we are watching humpback whales and not just any humpback whale, a cow-calf pair and a male escort and they're breaching the adults breach the baby breaches we get excited we take photos it's a great afternoon <laughs> You can see today we're in a strikingly different environment. You see the rocks, not sand dunes. And you see Cardone cactus. This is basically your marker letting you know you are now in Sonoran Desert, a beautiful, iconic cacti. Uh, this is one of the Choya cactus, C-H-O-L-L-A. And they, they are barbed. The spines are barbed. So they may not look it to your eye, but once we try, start extracting it from your skin, <laughs> you're a believer. That's right. So. Since the, um, one of the methods of, pro of propagation here is falling to pieces, basically, I call it the Patsy Klein cactus, it falls to pieces. <laughs> That's cute. Um, always watch your feet when you come near a choya because there is the potential for pieces to be loose on the ground.
that's a little hawk moth. Hawk moth or sphinx moth. Yeah, they, they're, um, they should be going to bed soon. Now we are in the Gulf of California and its uh, beautiful islands. This is one of them, a very small island called San Francisco. We are going to spend the afternoon here on this beautiful beach that is very, very small. It has a little bay of emerald color. And we will continue looking at the fantastic vegetation that is the Sonoran Desert vegetation. It's one of the most varied in, in the North American deserts. Uh, the cactus are very abundant here, the cacti, as well as the borseras, the prickly pear, the agave, uh, and some other beautiful plants, very important in the, of the desert environment. Smooth, shallow strokes. So when you're out there paddling, smooth, shallow strokes are most effective. If you're in a double, the person in back is the one who's steering. We're ready. Right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, so. Hop on. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you'll learn very But I'm going to look good. So you'll paddle on this. Well. Oh, which one? Which is like last one? That's my favorite. Fantastic. That's what we're doing. It's mine now. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Speaking English. <laughs> um, dinner. It's buffet. We have fish and we have chicken, potatoes, veggies. Cheers to dinner. Okay, well, A lot of it was cooked right over there. This is Chardonnay. Yes. Good. Salute. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. You'll be coming around with the beverages. Oh. Oh. Enjoy. Huh? It's very important that was called Ehecatl Quetzalcoatl, the god of the Quetzalcoatl of the wind. So he destroyed that world. This morning we're visiting Los Islotes, this wonderful sea lion colony made up of this incredible welded tuff that's been eroded away, gorgeous red rocks covered with a frosting of 
guano. It's also a bird colony, home to blue-footed boobies, brown boobies, lots of pelicans and gulls around too. What a wonderful way to spend our last morning aboard the National Geographic Seabird. Sally Lightfoot is another one. Oh, there's a pretty one. I usually use them up so close. Whoa. <laughs> One of the highlights of this trip in Baja California is getting to interact with sea lions underwater. Uh, as of, at the moment we get there, you can see the excitement of these animals, which are wild, but it's amazing that once we get in the water with them, they start behaving like puppies. And uh, they are so graceful underwater. When we look at them on the, on the rocks, they seem to be clumsy and not very well adapted for their environment. But once they're in the water, they're just magnificent to look at and uh, very fun to interact with. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs>